Hey, Hi. this is Lawyer Greg, uh, aka Greg McIntyre, um, and I'm Rob Ashford. British Rob. British Rob. There you go. That's right. And uh, you know, we're here. We're going to talk about Rockstar Lawyer today. We wrote uh, a book together, uh, yeah. and re recently, and uh, love the book. It's uh, I think you'll love the book. It's about business entrepreneurship. It's about social media. It's about getting rid of your inhibitions. It's about being the best you you can be and uh, putting yourself out there and running a business, right? Like a business, business mindset. That's correct. Law, even yeah. even a law office like a business. So we wanted to, to you know, I, I believe in giving away as much free out to the universe and people as possible um, and that it, it all comes back in the end. We'd love for you to read uh, Rockstar Lawyer, which is available on uh, the website lawyergreg.com uh, slash rockstar lawyer. Um, you can go directly to that link to see it or get it. And also, you can go to um, uh, Amazon, iTunes. The audiobook has been approved on the audiobook exchange. Rob and I both narrated the audiobook. And also, you can get it at Audible and iTunes for the audiobook as well. I uh, looked yesterday and it wasn't up, but it should be up in the next couple of days. If there's an approval process or kind of, it just takes you know a little time for that to generate and populate up there. And uh, so, so there's an ebook and enhanced ebook. Also, you can get the print book all day long. Okay, so on the website or directly on Amazon or iTunes. The enhanced ebook is my favorite. I'm not going to lie to you because it has videos like this with us talking about specific subjects that we discuss and deal with in the book yeah and you know why why are we writing a book why why are we uh, the 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 business gurus that we are writing a book on on business right and the title is rockstar lawyer but really you know it's not about being an attorney at all it's about being uh, an entrepreneur and a business person and it's about a lot of it's my journey that's in there and the re the reason we're qualified to do it is because there's a great story to tell, and we want to tell it. And There's a great need for it as well. There's a great need for it, and we like to put out, I love to put out valuable information. I love to write. Rob loves to write. He did an amazing job on this book, and, and we, want to, we want to put out value to, to, to everyone out there, period. Okay? We've got a ton of listeners, I know, in the United States and in Europe, Germany, and in Asia, okay, uh, Japan, especially, especially Japan. Yes, right. I mean, you know, you know. Hey, I'd love to start the Chinese capitalist revolution. You know, <laughs> if it's not already full swing, I'll help bring usher that in. Let's go. But uh, you know, we know we have a ton of listeners there, and uh, and we just, you know, we want to talk about how to take your business, how to take your life to that next level. But not just that. You know, we discuss real problems. You know, I'm not out there. Saying, hey, I'm driving a Lamborghini and I got, you know, I do have the smoking hot wife, okay? And so does Rob, right? But, 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 you know, I don't drive a Lamborghini. I drive a Chevy Malibu hybrid, right? Because it gets great gas mileage and I'm, it's good in the economy, all right? I like the hybrid part. I want to go, I'd love to go Tesla, like full electric one of these days. Cool. But, uh, but, you know, we, we, we deal with problems on a weekly, if not daily basis. That come up when you're running a business, mm -hmm. and and what are great creative ways to solve those problems? And should you throw your hands up and run the other way, or what should you do? Well, what we're going to do today is yeah. we're not going to we're not just going to go through the entire book. We're chapter gonna, one. We're going to do chapter one today, which is called "You Are Either On Stage or In the Crowd." So, what do you what do you think you mean by that? You're either on stage or you're in the crowd. I mean, you, you know, you make a choice. And we're going to do, by the way, we're going to do one of these reviews like at least once a week until we go through all 12 chapters, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, then that's going to lead into webinars that we're going to do right. as well. And, and then we're going to do 12-week series, maybe in the evening, say Wednesday evening, everybody gets together uh, online, and we go through individual issues and, 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 and work through the actual Rockstar Lawyer program or Rockstar Business program, which I think we're switching that. Book two is coming out soon, and that's going to be Rockstar Business. So you're either you're either on stage or in the crowd. That's your choice in life, I think. Um, and we begin, 
you know, your choice in life is to be on stage, uh, you know, performing what you do, doing what you do. Yeah. And you can take that mindset where you don't criticize others. You're not negative. Because when you're on stage and, and you're doing what you do, I mean, I have to imagine, you know, you're not worried about criticizing somebody else. You're paying attention to the speech you're giving or the song you're singing or the part you're performing when you're on stage, right? Yes. Yes, when you're absolutely. in crowd, that's when you start throwing tomatoes or hurling insults or, or commenting, period, right? And, and, and who really matters there in that whole situation? It's real, In my opinion, it's the person who's putting forth their whole creative effort and talent and ability toward their passion, they're, yeah, they're what putting, they do. They're putting yeah. themselves forward for criticism, basically, by being there. That's correct. And obviously, you know, that's a metaphor, okay, mm -hmm. uh, on stage or in the crowd for, for anything in life that you do in, 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 in business, especially, okay? And that's what it, this book's directed toward. So we're talking about, you know, if you're uh, a great basket weaver and that's what you do, then, you know, you're on stage doing that. Don't let the, the one person, the competition down the street, and there's no competition in my opinion, right? You should work collectively together to be the best you can be. Yeah. And, and, and the person that gets that, I believe, the, the individual, that get, the soul that gets that mentality and that non-criticizing, that positivity, is going to far outpace the, the competition and the haters, we call them, you know, the naysayers. Um, and we begin, we kick off the, the book with my, one of my favorite it's fantastic, excerpts. Fantastic quote. From, or quotes from, from uh, a Teddy Roosevelt speech called The Man in the Arena, okay? Yeah. Rob, you want to read that one? Sure. So this is the, um, the man in the arena. It is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never knew victory nor defeat. The point, choose to be on stage. Theodore is evolved. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. But man, I love that. That is That so sums up everything that we're talking about. Yeah. And what you deal with as an op entrepreneur, uh, period, or leader of a team, or I imagine president of the United States. Yeah, there's, I mean, you a, got there's a, a huge yeah, amount going on in that. The, in that that's quote. a very, very deep, I would say heirs. You would say errs. Right. Errs, yeah. I love it. He, he reads it so much better than I could. Um, and, and, uh, so, so, and by the way, this is so representative of what this book is about. What we're doing right now mm -hmm. is really the modern day book reading. Yeah. Is that all what this is? Yeah. The basically. modern day book reading. Hey, if you want me to sign your book or you want Robert to sign your book, uh, Contact we can, us. We can do that. Contact us on the LawyerGreg.com website or or uh, or tweet us at, at LawyerGreg. Or do you have at British Rob up yet? I am British Rob at gmail.com. British Rob at gmail.com. So, so, hey, at LawyerGreg, hit me up with a tweet. We'll get your book signed. And uh, I just love what we're doing right now. I mean, I'm, I get, I'm getting pumped, okay? I'm going to get more pumped when I drink this coffee. <laughs> So, so, so we're all choosing to be on stage in our life at some, well, we either choose to be on stage or we choose yeah. to be in the crowd. Right. And I, I just see most people, really what inspired this whole chapter and this book a lot, a lot um, was just noticing that most people on planet Earth, whether you're in a large town or a small town, they just sit back and they hate on others. And they have something snarky to say about everything that you do with your business or your personal life or your family 
Well, so they use it. Didn't I say I wasn't going to curse you on this one? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I'm not. So, so I, I don't promise that in the book, though. Okay. But, but uh, go ahead. Sorry, you were going to say something. Well, it, it's it's that they're using that anger, that hate, as as a, a shield. It's a fear, basically. It's their own fears coming up. It's more reflective of them than it is of the person that's on stage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I got I just got tired of seeing it, of experiencing it myself, of just a, what I felt was a just a spiraling negative environment that you can get caught up in, where woe is me, you know, you're you're fighting everybody else, you know, with all these comments back and forth. About your business or personal life or whatever it is every day. When you get caught up in that, I mean, that kind of consumes who you are. Yeah. And there's this whole negativity that clouds your judgment and, and just really clouds your positivity from coming through and letting you achieve your goals. So the point is, is to be comfortable with being on stage. Yes. To be comfortable with having some tomatoes thrown at you. To be comfortable with uh, having insults hurled your way. To be comfortable with with accepting applause and, and praise, also. Yeah, that can be as difficult as. And, and people as get scared to death just to be in front of the crowd, right? Just to put themselves out there. I mean, imagine if we could all peel away our layers and be our true selves. Mm -hmm. The world would be a much better place and a and brighter the, place. The cool thing about even having the the haters in the crowd, the people throwing stuff at you, is that if you're in that right mindset you can use that as either energy to, to lift yourself up further. You can address those issues, and it can take you in a whole new direction as well. You can use that as the next stage well, of so, your development. I mean, you know, your rocket has to have fuel. Yeah, exactly. So you can burn haters too. Yeah. I mean, you really can. <laughs> you can put them in the tank I like too. That. That's, that's clever. That, I mean, you can. I, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, if, if somebody wants to really get me fired up and rolling in a certain direction, give me some haters. In fact, I would say you're probably not doing the right thing or, and you're not at the level you need to be of activity mm -hmm. and being outgoing and selling your product or, or your service if you don't pick up haters. If somebody is not offended that you were actually out there talking about something. Right. When when you start getting people offended and, and they're they're giving you negative feedback, that's when you know you should in kind of the one of the phrases I was going to say that we coined, but I don't know if we coined it or not. But run toward the fire. I mean, that's really what you have to do. Yeah, is you want to run toward that fire because you know that that's where it's burning, man. That's where I'm, there's really something there. I'm not sure if it's really that we would go out of our way to offend people. I no, think no, that it's just again, yeah, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I think yeah. it's people's own interpretation of a situation. They but, might get offended by it because it doesn't match their thinking. But well, I guess really I guess I'm just I'm just you know I guess padding what we're saying with there will be people that won't that will not. And that's what we talk about in chapter one that will not like whatever you do. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what you do. You can do the opposite of what you're doing. They're not going to like it, right? You just cannot let yourself be deterred. By people like that. Absolutely. In fact, when you start hearing there's a rumble of negativity, it's probably because you're getting to a level where you're getting out to enough people that some of those people are starting to get touched and react. Yeah. Which is good. That means yeah. you're getting your reach out there. Yeah, right? absolutely. Or your competition's not happy, right? Which is neither yeah. here nor there, nor there. I mean, you shouldn't even worry about that. You know? No. It shouldn't bother you whatsoever. Yeah. Give them a call. It's their Say, hey, what's up? not yours. Give them a call. Invite them on your on your show. Invite them on stage. You know, in fact, yeah, that is a fantastic way of doing it. That is. That would be a fantastic way of doing it because you bring them up and you address their concerns. Yeah, yeah, and you're hitting on a lot of you know Gary V stuff or or uh, you know just a lot of current marketing gurus who would tell you that your your mission is to create raving fans. Not be bland, vanilla, middle of the road anyway. Your, your message, okay? Yeah. And, and that's, and we talk about that in this book as well. Um, yeah, you want you want your you want some controversy in there. 
controversy is fabulous. It's, it's just a wonderful thing to have. And it can really change your direction. It can, it can help you put your message out there. People react to things like that. They, they bring their own fears with them and they react to these things. And you can, you can address those fears. And yeah, you can use them. And, and you know, the people who agree on your side of that issue, you know, the way you handle that, and hopefully you handle that with positivity, they're going to they're gonna rally to your, to your defense. Yeah. And they're going to really identify with you and become raving fans. The people who don't, I mean, they're just not. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and, and you, you know, you can't win everybody and everything. So you need to reach the people that that are meant, you're meant to reach with your message and be yourself. So we, we divide this chapter into steps, okay? Um, and every chapter has a ten point summary and a backstage pass. Now, Robert, what are the backstage passes at the end of each chapter? Well, we have videos that are set up on the Lloyd Gregg website and they're basically the exercises that you can find in the chapter but it just summarizes them at the back so it gives you that opportunity to go there and start going through these these steps in backstage pass one you have step one is lose your inhibitions and the first exercise you come to is do crazy shit now this means not following the crowd. <laughs> this means not following the crowd. It's we've got here as long as it gives you the opportunity to step outside of yourself, even for a few seconds, then do it. Because it's going to change your your thinking. That's what you want to do. You want to start changing your thinking. You don't want to stick with traditional thought. You want to get out of the vanilla. Exactly. And into the more flavorful areas of yourself. Where did, where did that come from? What? Was that from, which book did the, the vanilla reference? I don't know. Um, I, well, uh, you know. I remember there was an ice cream reference. At some well, pur Purple Cow is, is Purple one Cow. that really, really hammers that home. Uh, with Seth Godin. Right. I mean, you know, Purple Cow is a great marketing book. And it really, really nails down that, uh, that if you're, you know, the old days where you're, message needs to be vanilla and bland and and just reach everyone and offend no one are gone and, and you're just going to put out a tv ad and that's going to accomplish your mission those days are long gone uh, yeah. you, your 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 job is to be yourself to reach your fans um, not to worry about who that might offend on the other side because right. they're not your fans anyway and your fans are going to defend you your fans are going to preach your message so that's that's kind of your goal your, your backstage passes, those are assignments and homework. And there's also areas to take notes in the book at the end of every back, backstage pass. And so it really works like a, a workbook. Each, after each chapter, you go through exercises. And then you can follow along with the videos and enhance that with the videos on lawyergreg.com, the backstage pass videos for each chapter. But yeah, the, the first uh, step is lose your inhibitions. And by losing your inhibitions, we're talking about what, what an old law school professor of mine talked about in, in, in practicing law and in being a, a good student in law school. Mm -hmm. is your, your first job is to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about, getting outside of your comfort. comfort. I can say this with a million different uh, little you know, sayings, okay? Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You have to stretch to grow. You know, it, it may your growth like areas. A, it may sound like a cliche, though. Yeah, like get out of your like, comfort zone, but it's it's so valuable and it's so true. And if you can run, that's why we're talking about running toward the fire. If there's controversy, if there's things that you're like, oh man, you know, I can't believe that happened. Right, man, it just makes me wince. I mean, I do this sometimes. Okay, <laughs> I do, I and I'm like, oh wow, you know, I can't. Can't, you know, I, I want to shy away from that. I want to run away from whatever's going on over here in my business or life or whatever. But really, the quicker you can make yourself run to that yeah. and take care of it, the stronger you are in that area. And then when you do that, you usually find out it's not that big of a deal. Right. right. So, so, so losing your inhibitions, we're, we're trying to get you primed and ready to even read this book, okay? Because to read this book and understand it, and really be tuned in with it, which is where I want you, you have to get to the level 
in the pitch to where I try to operate and run my business and run my life, um, which is really losing your inhibitions and being able to say your message freely regardless of the fallout. So we talk about some exercises to get you into that, right? That's right. And, uh, and we go through individual exercises. I don't know. Maybe going to the court square and just laying down in the grass. Well, doing, <laughs> yeah, doing crazy shit doesn't <laughs> necessarily mean you've got you've to suddenly steal a plane. Be Will Ferrell and old school run, run, down, run, th run through campus naked or something. Exactly. I mean, you, you can do this very, with very small steps. It's just something to get you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, it might be going to uh, going to a chamber mixer or something. You know, I just don't know where your comfort level is, but uh, but we talk about different things to, to get you there, and then we we go into chapter two or section step two. Sorry, step, step two, two in chapter one. Get haters now, and get haters now just means stop being indecisive. Stop trying to offend no one. Stop having a vanilla message because that's what your message is. And really stop caring. Stop other caring. People think about you. If you're up on that stage, it doesn't matter if someone's shouting abuse. It's that, how you react. And that to doesn't it that's mean important. that you're hateful or anything else because nobody wants to hear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you know, what what we're saying there, or what I'm saying there, um, with get haters now is is stop worrying about every aspect of your brand. Now you, you should think about, you know, hey, you know, that doesn't mean you do foolish things or that you put out foolish messages yeah. you know, that polarize people necessarily in bad ways. But that just means, you know, and I'm assuming that everybody out there as human beings is innately good and ethical and they're, and they're trying to put out a good message. But... Don't let the fact that somebody you don't like may see this or your competition or someone else, don't let that fact stop you from putting out your message. Pick your message. Yeah. Be clear. Don't be indecisive. I mean, if there's a side of an issue that you're talking about with it, pick a, pick a, pick a dang side, man. Pick a side, you know, and, and really, really stick with that side and push that message. Mm -hmm. Don't waffle. Don't be middle of the road. Don't try to play both sides. Pick a pick a message, you know, and don't alter your message to, to match what the the people out there are screaming at you about. Don't change right, your it. haters, the people that don't agree with you. Don't That's change correct. it to match their fears. And only when you can do that can you really realize what Seth Godin's talking about in the Purple Cow, mm -hmm. which is creating raving fans in a specific message. Find what message, what positive message. I'm talking about nothing but positive messages here. What positive message tells the story of your brand? What positive information and education reaches your target audience and helps them? And that, that just doing that and not worrying about making it vanilla and make it bold, you know, really do it, really reach your audience, will create friction on the other side from a number yeah. of parties. Be prepared for that and understand that that's what you want to do. That's what you want to happen. So that's step two. And then we go to step three. High, high frequency. frequency. High frequency. So yeah. the reason that we, we mention high frequency is because there is so much traffic on the internet. There's so much that you have to get out your message if again that's your platform and again, and again. If that's your platform, yeah. okay? And I assume it probably is, you know, right. Uh, and unless you're a street corner preacher or you're just the best networker on planet earth personally, which is great, but why not use why not leverage social media, the internet, the megaphone? I mean, I want to do the most with the least. The most with the least amount of effort, the most with the least amount of money, right? To get my message out there to the intended audience. Well, I think so we use social and the internet gives you the ability to do that. We used as an analogy by putting one or two mess, one or two posts out on the internet a week. It's like spitting in the ocean. It's not going to have. That's a Grant effect. Cardone reference, by the way. Spitting in the ocean. Okay, it is. He talks about. That. That's, I want to say he's, he mentioned I want to say he mentioned that in 10x rule 
But uh, yeah, I love that term, spitting in the ocean. That's exactly what it is. He just gets lost. Oh, I work with a social media person who I love, but but uh, you know, I'd love to work with her. But uh, she's great. But uh, well, maybe maybe you know, not so much volume, Greg. Maybe just quality versus quantity. You know, you want quality, yes, but you want a lot of it. You want, you want a you want, you want quality and quantity. You want, yeah. you want high frequency. Yeah. Because if you don't have high frequency, your message will be lost. You will not get through. I mean, it takes an enormous amount of time for someone to see from a marketing standpoint your message for them to actually get it or it to go off and associate you with your brand and their problem with your solution. And it's not just that there's a lot of traffic, it's that there's a lot of traffic that is specific to your industry, to, to that niche that you're you're trying to make a path in. There's there's so many other people who will be doing very similar stuff that you are, and you want to get your voice louder than theirs. So it's it's got to be it's got to be a lot of frequency. And then we talk about when you were tired and run down. That is step four. I'm not tired and run down today because I got some rest yesterday. I did. I did some work yesterday. But I got some rest. Too. So when you're tired and run down, and you had, you know, the the quote by Martin Luther King there is a great quote. Is a great quote, isn't it? If I'm gonna read that, you can do that one. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, you know, what a great quote. That can be applied to any many areas of life, um, and you know, with whatever your cause is, uh, you know, my cause is growing my business, taking care of first, taking care of me and my family, okay, mm -hmm. taking care of my kids, taking care of my employees and their kids, taking care of my customers, helping others, and. You know, when you're tired and run down, as an entrepreneur, you're going to identify with this. Sometimes you get that way, and coffee's your best friend, okay? <laughs> I've come to realize that a good night's sleep is also a great friend. Well, this, and that when I'm pumped and jazzed, I need less sleep, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say that. Well, this also relates a lot to procrastination, because mm -hmm. if, you, if you get hit, a lot of people are going to back off. They're, they're not going to continue down the path that they wanted to and still want to. They're, they're afraid to do it. So if you get some negative feedback, right? Yeah, that then, can hit you then, hard. Then all of a sudden you're supposed to come back and offer an apology. Mm -hmm. Or you're supposed to go in a different direction and, and, and change your message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Because you got that, one person out there who didn't like what you said. Use that comment to see if there's a way that you or, can integrate. Or, hey, you misspelled something on your social media post. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're picking up. You know, gosh, we just, we've got to. very picky. Yeah, we've got to, we've got to, you know, we've got to really wait before we put out all these things. Um, Greg, you can't be rolling, the, you know, you can't be, you know, rattling those things off, you know, uh, at the end of the day on your phone, right? Because mm -hmm. you misspelled a word or autocorrect did something, right? right? No. Don't wait for, for, for perfection. You don't don't strike while the iron is hot. Don't back off. Don't slow down. Keep going. Keep up the frequency. Keep striking. And then you, you learn to, to... And then if you have real problems and haters that arise, something that arises, then you go deal with it. It gives you an opportunity. That gives you another platform. And one thing leads to another. I mean, some of the best publicity I've ever gotten has been over something controversial. Right. But no kidding. Yeah. So, so yeah. So once you once you get that momentum going, you're gonna keep going. You you know, one hater isn't gonna stop that wheel turning at all. Mm -hmm. You'll roll over. Yeah. Boom. Just a little bump in the road. That's right. That's right. So, so, uh, you know, that that would bring you to the ten point summary. Mm -hmm. In chapter one, which which we summarize each, each point uh, in in ten points, or each each major point in ten points that we made during the chapter, and then we go into the backstage past exercises, and we put 
real work and exercises with what we talked about in the chapter, okay? And the LawyerGreg.com website allows you to create an account and comment on each backstage pass. And we video. really want your comments. We'd love those comments and to see how your work is going, to see how you're doing. Um, again, you can, you can uh, watch the backstage pass videos no matter if you have the audiobook, the enhanced ebook, the ebook, or the print book. And that's available on lawyergreg.com slash rockstar lawyer. Also, you can just go to lawyergreg.com and click, you know, right there on, or go to the store and buy it too, any of the versions. Or, you know, on iTunes or Amazon Audible, you know, you can get it there. And uh, we're so going to be doing. We, go ahead, sorry. Shall we go through the 10 point summary? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So our first point on the 10 point summary is you are closer to being a rock star than you realize. So basically everything you have in your life right now is because of your past thinking. Because of that, it gives you a tremendous power. If you change your thinking, you can basically go in whichever direction to any level that you want. But your thinking has to match that. Or you have to match your thinking, whichever way you want to think about it. So what's number two? Agreed. You just have to step up on stage. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And do your thing. And 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 they're gonna, you know, and it's going to work. Yes. If you want it to work. It is literally yeah, up to you. Yeah, you've got to have that commitment. It is literally up to you to create your universe as you go along. Yes. It's your movie. That was the Brit. Pretty much sum that up. That was Teddy uh, Churchill. Sounds Churchill. Churchill. Yeah. He's got some good quotes. He does. He has some great quotes. I, I had that quote around here somewhere. I looked at it today earlier. Um, it literally he talks about creating your universe as you go. Lose your inhibitions. Uh, we talked about how we've allowed inhibitions to define us rather than challenge us. Ask yourself uh, while focusing on one inhibition: Does this help me achieve my goal, or does it hold me back? So if you've got an inhibition against going and meeting, agreeing, and talking to people, then you got to figure out a way around that. Maybe, maybe your thing is to start off with a podcast, uh, you know, and really, really blast that out. Maybe your thing yeah. is to uh, make sure that you conquer that inhibition and start, uh, you know, really, because if you face your fears and you run toward your fears, that's what we call running toward the fire, that's when you become strong. And that's what you need to do. Really, you can run your whole career on just facing your fears and conquering your fears. Yeah. And that would yeah, be a great could, career. A could. great career. Uh, three? Number three is start doing crazy shit. Right, and crazy spell with a K. So, <laughs> do uh, something you would not normally do. Yeah, and, 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 and so we misspelled crazy there on purpose. I That's guess. right. I hope yeah. that annoys somebody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something, someone, someone will be bothered by that. <laughs> well, no, I hate that. Do something you would not normally do. Um, go ahead. Um, but once you begin to get used to the, to a certain level of craziness, you need to up it. You need to continually get out of that comfort zone. Once you get comfortable, move out of it. Get up higher. Agreed. As long as you, every time you do that, it gives you an opportunity to step outside yourself. And that's exactly what you want to do. And have a louder voice, be on a bigger stage, yeah. explore more opportunities. Um, be a first-rate version of yourself. Do don't, not follow the crowd. Don't follow the crowd. So, do you, man. Yeah, just be yourself. Don't, do you. don't just pick a, a guru and... Sound like a mouth and commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, try yeah, them. Don't mimic somebody else. I'll say, though, you know, just as a, a, a sideline on that, if you pick a guru and just emulate their teachings, if they're a positive, ethical person, mm -hmm. okay, it's not a bad way to start. No, no. Because not, somewhere no. along the line... I think, and I've done, I mean, I've done this. I know this from personal experience. You know, you start channeling that other person, right, for a while. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, at some point, you kind of, you're like, oh, well, that's not me. This is me. Right. And you find yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's by really getting to a high level of action and doing that and going for it, yes. trying to find yourself, okay, yes. and your voice, that you really peel back and become the authentic you. I think that could be done by following another, okay? Mm -hmm. That would lead you to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 
So number five is get haters. Be passionate. That's a huge one. Be passionate. Be opinionated and give value in what you're saying. Be clear about what you're saying. That's really important. And by doing this, by, uh, by getting a message out there that is clear, that is somewhat controversial, and is passionate, it's opinionated, you will build up a, a league of, of people who love your message and others who will absolutely hate it. But that's what you want. You want both sides to play off each other to build you up higher. I'll tell you this too: haters can jump to fans in a second, by the way. Yeah, they can. I mean, I really think so. Especially someone who's that riled up, who's that emotional and opinionated on one side. I mean, that opinion will swing. Like as that. long as you don't lower yourself to no. throwing hate back no. at them, you no, want to never rest those things. No, you want to. That hate they're spewing toward you, that energy, that energy, it just makes you stronger, man. Yeah. It really does. Um, so stop being indecisive. Pick a side. Make a decision. Back that side. There's no wrong answer. Uh, it's your opinion, okay? So whatever your opinion is toward what your business is, I don't care if you're commenting on. I really don't care. If you're commenting on political events, world events, uh, religious events, you yeah. know, whatever your opinion is, do you do that? Yeah. Let that be what your business is. Let that be who you are. Let that represent. Exactly. And then exactly. you're going to offend some people. I promise you. Okay. And that's okay. Number seven is get frequent with your message. You've got to start getting this, your ideas out there and posting them again and again and again. You've got to keep that frequency up. You have a view, share it. It's the only way you're ever going to be heard over the volume of traffic out there. Develop a killer instinct. Um, but there's nothing to fear but fear itself or something like that, you know? Right. I mean, that's right. the killer instinct. You just got to get rid of that fear and just keep rolling. That's the only way you build momentum. As a person, as a personality, as confidence in business mm -hmm. and, and with your business, with, with your whatever that is. Um, just develop that killer instinct. And... You know, the, the dark side of that and the reality of entrepreneurship and running your own thing in your own business is that it's a dog eat dog world if you let it, if you get into that. And it's a eat what you kill is how you get paid, okay? Yeah. So, so your motivation, your clarity, your ability to reach your target, target audience. That determines whether you and your family gets to eat and you get to pay your employees and they get to eat. Yeah. So so you have to develop a killer instinct with your message and confidence to be able to put that out on a regular basis and not stop. And I think also a killer instinct is to realize that nothing can stop you except you. You are the only limit that there is. If you accept that limit, you're basically screwed. <laughs> I mean, just frankly speaking, <laughs> British Rob gives it to you straight. <laughs> frankly. You don't want to give up. If you give up, then, as we put here, then the killer within has taken another victim. That, that's right. I, I love that. I love that. And, and, and that is kind of how we end the chapter, talking about, look, you know, you're the one who you have to conquer. You're the yes. one who you, who you have to do. Really, it's all you. Yeah, it's absolutely. all in here. Absolutely. It's all in here. So, so I hope you've enjoyed just our summary. Uh, this is a writer's summary of uh, Rockstar Lawyer Chapter One. Uh, on stage or in the crowd? Well, we have we have two more left. We have number nine. Don't wait on the sidelines. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry, Rob. I'm sorry. See, I screwed up every once in a while. So nine, you're right, they're on the other side of the page. Ten-point summary, not an eight-point summary. So don't wait on the sidelines. You go ahead. Do not hold on to your idea until it's absolutely perfect. You don't want to do that. Make your mistakes. They can be fixed. Just like this. Just like you corrected me and we're rolling on with nine and right, ten. Right, exactly. Uh, they can be fixed. Get out there and make a difference. So don't wait. I mean, why are you waiting? Why are you procrastinating? What are you waiting for? Plus, the best way to learn is just by doing. We live in a world that's yeah, so is. scared to make mistakes now. That's oh, right. you can't make a mistake. You can't 
can't do that. Of course you can. Go make your dang mistake, you know? Go make your mistake and and then fail your way to the top. Fail your way to the top. That's exactly right. That's no, a, nothing that's another great nothing one. teaches you like losing money, friends, customers. Um, I believe it was W. Edwards Demings who said double your rate of failure. To be successful, double your rate of failure. It's, a, it's fantastic. That is fantastic. I think we have that quote in here. We do. Um, and then number 10, keep the momentum going. And that's what we're talking about is getting the momentum up. And every time, every time I think that I've reached a good momentum and I'm there, every time I start getting comfortable and happy, mm-hmm. okay, and I feel good, prideful and satisfied, down. that's when immediately afterwards there's a dip. Yeah. And then I realize that, oh, man, you know, I'm not even close to, to the level I used to be at. I mean, I think about the level I was running at last year this time. And I'm trying to step back and work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Okay? Kind of, you know, a little bit, right? Just kind of think things through a little bit more and just make calculated decisions. But still, I feel like my momentum, my momentum has slowed in a way, so, so I have to get back it's out. It's so easy yeah. to get It's so easy to get complacent. When it's things right. get good, you can so easily back off. That's correct. You That's just correct. like that that nice feeling and so you don't so you, you need to keep that anymore. tension you need to keep that tension there yeah you really do anyway is it okay if i start to close this out now? yeah okay yeah. all right thank you um, <laughs> and so so rockstar lawyer okay you're gonna love this book um rob and i put a lot of work and effort it's real it's not bs at all it is real life solutions to business problems and also a mindset that can take your business from a small business to however far you want to take it. And, yes. and the main thing that I'm doing and we're doing is documenting the process. Uh, we're documenting the process of that. And I guarantee you, if there's any mistake that you want to make in business or life, I've probably made it, okay? And I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm going to tell you what I did to push through. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you there's always a solution and always an answer, no matter how you, bad you think the day or the week is yeah, or the absolutely. month or the year or whatever. You know, I, you know, or, or, or if you want to get, take your business in an entirely different direction, but you're scared, you know, why? Just do it. Yeah. So, so, so this is the book for you. If, if you ever thought about starting a business, if you run a business, uh, if you're a professional, if you... If you are a plumber, um, if you, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, for, to me, a professional is someone who is serious about and good at what they do. Period. If you're serious about what you do, I don't care if you weed baskets for a living. Could right. care less. And I have respect for all people and whatever they do. Uh, and I, I feel like I'm talking to my kids here. This is exactly what I tell my kids all the time. You know, my kids want to go to college right, right now. My oldest. Mm-hmm. And he's worried so much about picking a career that makes the most money. Right. And I, I tell him all the time how bad of a decision I think that is. Yeah. But that I applaud him picking something and going toward it. Because at least he'll figure out if that's the right direction or if he's going the wrong direction, he can go the other way. Can always do that but again. pick something and go toward it. So right. if you pick something in your life and you're going toward it, Rockstar Lawyer would be a great read for you. We're going to do chapter two next week, and we'll do all the way through chapter 12. Yep. When we're done with these, we'll put these all on the uh, Rockstar Lawyer, lawyergreg.com slash Rockstar Lawyer page, uh, along with the book So to buy. So, so go purchase the book and give us your feedback. What else do we need to plug? What else do we need to upsell? Great content for free on lawyergreg.com. And the Lawyer Greg podcast, the Rockstar Lawyer Project for the Lawyer Greg podcast is awesome. A lot of good content mm-hmm. up there we put out regularly. So have a great day. Get crazy. It's Labor Day, so that means we got to work, right? Yeah, you got to work now. All right. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>